Hello and welcome to the Divorce to Bliss podcast. Here you will learn all things related to healing from divorce, mind, body, and spirit, so you can create a beautiful new life filled with happiness. I'm Rachel Ruby, author of Divorce to Bliss, divorce coach, speaker, and attorney, and I'm so glad you found me here. Hello and welcome to the Divorce to Bliss podcast. I'm Rachel S. Ruby. And I'm going to be discussing today the importance of a strong parental partnership when it comes to the children. And we're going to discuss mostly children, you know, and not adult children. But I would like to bring up something interesting about adult children kind of as it relates to gray divorce toward the end of the podcast um, and maybe interweave those a little bit throughout. So... First of all, I wanted to read a quote that I wrote in my book that I think is um, really important. If you have young children, and that can be anywhere from babies all the way through um, to the end of elementary school. And it could even apply to, it even does apply to middle school children as well. And here it is. It's by Dave Ramsey, who's an author. And he says, children are sponges. They are going to absorb whatever is around them. So we need to be intentional about what surrounds them. And I thought that this was such a wonderful quote when it comes to children and divorce, because of course, children are, they suffer a lot um, through divorce. Even if it's an amicable divorce, things change and children are really prone to being, um, having routines and, you know, having the love and all of a sudden, if the parents, the two parents aren't there, um, this can create a lot of fear and anxiety and, you know, questions as to how things are going to be. And we need to be really, really, um, pay it, we need to be attentive to that. So let's, t- let's kind of jump in to parental partnerships and why it's so important to have a unified front, as I say. And of course, these with children, you know, school age children are usually written into custody agreements. So, um, and of course, we're going to follow what is written into the custody agreements. However, that doesn't always have an effect on the behaviors of the parents, right? Because divorce, of course, affects the parents too. And even in cases where it's amicable or whether it isn't amicable, there can be negative emotions, of course. So, those can sometimes affect what comes out of the mouth of a parent. And we're going to get into that a little bit as well. But even though things are written into the custody agreement, this this podcast is really talking about how we act, what our words mean, um, when, what we can do to really protect the kids and make them feel like the family is a unit, even though it may be splitting apart or feel like the family splitting apart to them. We don't want them to feel that. We want them to still feel the love. So... Here are the basics that I talk about in my book about how to help kids through divorce. And number one is honest communication, of course. Now, the the type of communication is going to be dependent on the age of the children. And there is so much research or so much literature on this and not going to go into, you know, how you talk to a toddler versus how you talk to a middle schooler. But you really want to be cognizant of the different ways to talk. Even if you think you know what they are, you might want to get some advice first and from a therapist or from a a healing coach or from, you know, some great books that are out there because the way you speak to those children is going to have an effect on them, not just immediately, but as they go through their life and especially when they get older and they start forming their own relationships with others. So um, love relationships or potential love relationships. So it's so important to understand that different age children need different things from the parents. And this can even, uh, this does even apply to adult children because they're going to need some things from the parents as well, some assurances, and they're going to need to, um, well, we'll get into that a little bit later. But so, like I said, you want to, you want to communicate honestly. And if you do have young children or even children all the way up through high school age, the most important thing, in my opinion, is that both the parents sit down with the children and explain to them that they're getting divorced and how things are going to work and what's going to happen. Because that time is a critical time for the parents to both show a unified front in the parenting. And it is perhaps the 
best time possible that you can never get back, right? To sit down with those children and show them that you both love them. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them that you're going to do everything, even though you may be living in different homes, you're going to do everything within your power to still keep things as similar as possible um, as far as lifestyle and being able to be with the parents and still have fun. And, you know, again, really research the right way to talk to your kids based on their age, because this is going to help them immensely. And please try to talk to them together at the beginning, because this also will help them to realize that uh, they are, you know, things are going to change, but mom and dad both love them so much. And especially with younger kids, because not little, little kids, but maybe elementary age kids, a lot of times can just assume that they are to blame for the parents splitting up. That's a really common reaction. And so sitting down in the, in the beginning at the get go of this whole decision to divorce and separate is so important to the kids because a lot of times the kids won't express their feelings that they feel guilty for the split. So if you can do that, if you can put aside whatever negative feelings you have towards that former spouse, soon to be former spouse, and focus your love on these children, try if you can to sit down and do this because I have seen it make a big difference. And I think that for children who I have spoken to who've come from divorce later in life, you know, they've spoken to me about what they experienced. It really makes a big difference when mom and dad have a unified front regarding the parenting. So that's number one. And number two is to make time to plan with the former spouse or soon to be former spouse, um, plan for the children. And again, this is imperative because it shows that unified connectedness of the parents that they have the, the common goal to take care of the children and keep things flowing, you know, within the family, even though mom and dad may not live together anymore. And again, this makes a very, very big noticeable difference on the children and how they fare with the whole divorce and all the things that are changing. So make time to plan with your spouse and or former spouse. And you can do this by setting a time. It can be once a month. It could be once a week. And you can, you know, you can put this into your custody agreement if need be, if there's, you know, um, difficulty between the parents talking or wanting to even talk to each other. So this is a situation where you need to just, again, suck it up and realize that you're doing this because of the children. You are a parent and that former spouse or soon to be former spouse is also a parent of these beautiful, wonderful children. And the goal is to protect them and let them know that life is going to go on and they are going to continue to be loved and the parents both are going to be uh, play a role in their lives. So make that time to connect with the parent, make a schedule, put it in your custody agreement if you need be. I mean, I always suggest doing that anyway. You can always make changes to that and have a plan B. So for example, let's say you have the schedule for, you know, Bobby and Susie for the week, their activities, their school, their camp, whatever it is, and there's a change or someone's car breaks down, you have to have a plan as to how you're going to reach each other, whether it's a phone call, um, usually in an emergency situation or a situation like where a car breaks down and you can't get to pick up your kids, you need to text. So um, sometimes I know a lot of spouses will block each other <laughs> on text messages, but if you have kids, that's not a good idea. So make sure you set a plan and you set that plan B for if things need to be changed. And number three is, and this is a hard one for so many people when it comes to divorce, and that's normal, is to control your emotions. And um, this can be hard, but it's necessary with kids because, again, you want to show the kids that they're loved and they're safe and both parents love them and make them feel safe, not just one or the other. And so there's a couple of ways you want to do this. And one is controlling your emotions, obviously, in front of the kids uh, when you're speaking to that former spouse or that soon-to-be former spouse. If you're swapping kids, you're picking up 
the kids from the, that that other spouse's house or um, you're both at a football game, baseball game, ballet recital, whatever it is, you always want to speak respectfully to the other parent. And that is because Again, like the quote I read at the beginning of the podcast, kids are sponges and they can feel, they can not only hear the negativity, but they can feel it. And so if you turn away from your spouse or your the other parent in a really angry manner and slam a car door and mumble to yourself, that is the same thing as yelling at that that parent or doing something, you know, saying something mean. So this is especially the case with little kids, but with all kids, you you are forming their thoughts on relationship that are going to carry into the rest of their lives. So if you treat that other parent rudely, disrespectfully, angrily, even though you, you're you getting a divorce or you got a divorce and the kids know that that relationship didn't last, they can still understand that parents can be not only civil, but can be respectful. And that gives hope to them that they can grow up and have a quote unquote normal and happy relationship. And this is especially true for middle and high school age kids because that when they're older, they can see that bitterness and they, a lot of kids, divorce, kids from, of divorce tend to believe that relationship, happy relationships aren't possible. So you have to really watch your actions and what you say and control your emotions and those actions as well. Okay. Super, super important. And this is also true with adult kids because what happens with adult kids is in a gray divorce, a lot of parents, one parent may be, you know, more upset than the other, or they both may feel a lot of angry and negative feelings toward each other. And because the kids are adults, they may tend to forget that it's not nice to talk about the mom or the dad in a negative way and to not only talk in a negative way, like, I don't like when your mom texts me, that just really upsets me. Tell her not to do that. The pulling of the kid, the adult child into the middle of the situation is not good because again, as adult kids, as adults, these children are going to realize that maybe it's not possible to have a happy relationship ever. And that could really affect them as they go forward and meet others. So you want to show them that even though you divorced, even though you couldn't stay with the other spouse, the other parent, um, and live with that person, you still respect them and care for them because they are the mother or the father of your children, right? And this sends a very positive message to adult children as well. So control your emotions. If you need help with that, you can get therapy. You can go to a coach. Um, there's there's really great ways to learn how to control the, the emotions with breath and to kind of step out of that moment to take some breaths for a while and close your eyes and just before you react, right? So you can respond instead in a way that is much more positive and the kids will pick up on that whether they're little or they're adults and then the fourth the last one is to be empathetic patient and show extra love and this is a given we all know this but again sometimes when we're feeling negative emotions towards the other parent maybe there was an argument about schedules maybe um there was a weekend that had to be changed on the custody and that parent is upset because they were planning to go away whatever it is Always remember that you have to show this extra love, this extra empathy to the children because the divorce isn't just hard on you. It's hard on them. And sometimes it's even harder on them, right? Because their whole world is changing. They rely on you and the parents, the mothers, the fathers. They rely on the parents to kind of drive their world, you know, dictate what happens, make the rules. And if the parents are out of control with emotions or they're not showing love or they're showing anger and expressing things that are negative, the kids are going to feel that. And again, like I mentioned, younger kids can take that as um, 
an assumption that they're at fault. And even adult children can take that in a bad way, like I mentioned with future relationships and um, being pulled into the middle of this thing that mom and dad are going through. And that is not okay. You need to be the man or the woman and man up or woman up and not pull your children, I don't care what age they are, into the middle of your divorce, into the middle, even years later after the divorce. If there's anger, don't pull those kids in. Just deal with it on your own and get some help if that's what you need and do the work because that's really the way to get out of that feeling. It's not by pulling your kid in and saying, you know, your mom's just being ridiculous. I mean, that's that's not what we do. That is not how we help anyone, least of all the kids and and ourselves. So um, also one more thing with the younger children, like I mentioned, sometimes they don't express what they're going through when there is a divorce. So it is so important to look for signs of struggles within your children. And this can come in the form of struggles at school, um, expressions of anger, um, not eating, especially kids sometimes um, with girls, young girls, if they're not getting the right help, they can, there have been cases of um, anorexia, bulimia, you know, they turn to other ways to try to cope with the feelings they're having. So um, also grades dropping, that's a big one too. So if you see any signs of struggle or any signs of um, personality changes within your children, no matter what age they are, talk to them about it. And you you should definitely consider getting them some help. Because again, um, if you don't, and even if they say, oh, I'm fine, but you can see signs of struggle or personality changes, then this can carry into their futures. And you want to, of course, make sure that they are as strong as they can be individually inside as a person. It's important to remember that divorce creates an opportunity to not only show our kids how much we love them, but to also show them or teach them how important it is for parents to be unified. And this is the message. I know this is hard, folks. Sometimes I know that um, sometimes you don't even want to speak to that former spouse. And But if you are a parent, you signed up for this. You signed up to be a parent. And part of being a parent is co-parenting, right? So unless, of course, there's a situation where there's something extreme like the other parent is alcohol, abusing alcohol or drugs and that kind of thing. And that's a whole different conversation. But if both parents are splitting and there are no issues like that, you are both parents and you have to respect the other parent is a parent. It doesn't matter if that person cheated on you. It doesn't matter if there was verbal abuse. It doesn't matter if there was just a lot of really bad juju going on in the split of this marriage. And, you know, money involved and and all the things that can make people crazy. When you realize that those things have nothing to do with your parenting of these children, because you are teaching these children how to be adult, how to act in a relationship. And, and, and the most important thing is for them to know that even if a relationship doesn't work out, you're not ever going to skimp on the love you have for the children and it's not their fault. So here are four quick ways, um, and it's kind of a little bit of a repeat of some of the information I've already mentioned, but four quick ways to show kids the importance of love of yourself and of others. One is to show and speak love always. And um, again, this is a teaching learning experience for the kids. Two is to show and speak words of respect to the other parent. Like I mentioned, so, so important. Let's your kids see that you are still a unit. You still both love the kids. Three is to stick to the plans that you make with the form with the other parent unless there is something that needs to be changed. Because again, it's really showing the kids that you are a unit and that you're both striving to keep things as normal as possible. And four is with adult children. And again, this is not pulling those children into the middle of anything, not trying to get them on your side because, you know, the other parent, in your opinion, did something bad or wrong. So those are the four quick tips. And we want to make sure that we are always putting our parenting hats on when it comes to the children. And we are making sure that their transition from divorce or out of divorce is as positive as it can be. 
So thank you so much for being here today. If you have any questions or need help with your um, journey from divorce to bliss, I would love to help you. But stay true to your parenting responsibilities if you are a parent. And remember that those kids need you. They need both their parents. Have a wonderful day.